This is this this is gonna become a YouTube video. I have to look good. I have to look good. This is gonna become a YouTube video. What is today's stream? We are taking one hour to learn as much as we can about Bluetooth. I will then have 30 minutes to make a presentation that I must immediately present to you. I do not know anything about how Bluetooth works. I just know it is a thing and we're gonna learn about it. Do I already know about Bluetooth? Nothing. I'm dumb. Why am I scared? We're starting. First, um, everyone wants to know the origin, origin of the name Bluetooth, something about Vikings. How does Bluetooth send music over the air to my headphones? Why does everyone say Bluetooth sucks? Um, please don't sabotage this, please. Ha Encryption? 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 Encryption. Okay, why is my mic gonna fall off? Oh my God, my mic's gonna fall off. Oh my God, my mic is gonna fall off, fuck. No! We don't have time! Security mode three comes when dealing with connected devices connected broad... Security mode three comes about when dealing with devices broadcasting I I so... I so... I so Cronus? I so Cronus? What is isochronous? Then what's asynchronous? How is that different from synchronous? Oh, okay. Isochronous and synchronous are both methods for sending data with regular timing, but synchronous relies on a single shared clock. Iso, 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 isochronous, isochronous? How do you say that? Isochronous. 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 Never heard that word before. That is a new word to me today. Ho! Oh my God. We did it. Timer's up. Look. I don't know. 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 Oh my God. Okay. I'm really gonna have to think of funny ways to make, to make this funny. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a rough one. There's no jokes in B Bluetooth. There's no jokes in Bluetooth. Bluetooth is no joke. There's no funny hee hee ha ha moments. I have 30 minutes to make my slides for my presentation on Bluetooth. Please enjoy your brain rot so you stay entertained. Um, I don't know, man. Okay, let me put my glasses on. Today we're gonna answer the question, what is Bluetooth? And I thought it would be fun to solve this question by asking more questions. We will be asking who, what, where, when, why, and how, but not in that order. Okay, I, um, I changed up the order to tell a better story. So the, we will be asking the questions of who, what, where, when, why, and how about Bluetooth so that we can get answers, starting with who is Bluetooth? Because it turns out, if you didn't know, Bluetooth is a person. While we are thinking of Bluetooth as a piece of technology, Bluetooth is a person. Bluetooth was a, um, I have some notes now. Also, this time I have notes. Bluetooth is a um, Danish king who uh, united warring tribes in the 10th century and Allegedly, he was named Bluetooth because one of his teeth was blue or rotted or something. And so his symbols are, for his name were H and B because his name was Harold Bluetooth Gorm Gormson? Gormson. And those came together to make the Bluetooth symbol. That is how the Bluetooth symbol came to be. Not just because it's blue, Bluetooth, but it stands for Harold with H A Bluetooth. It's kind of meta. If in a way, it is in the way. Bluetooth is kind of like what is that? What is that Linux joke or whatever? The the GNU, the GNU. Oh my god! I can't believe I said it like that. What's the Linux joke? Oh my God, why am I forget, forgetting the Linux joke? 
um, the one where it's like it stands for its own term. Someone in chat knows it. I cannot believe I'm forgetting this. But technically, Bluetooth, the Bluetooth symbol stands for Bluetooth itself, but then there's other things inside of there. Like that Linux joke. I can't believe I'm forgetting it. This isn't, it's not recursive, but it is recursive. But it's like, um, God, I can't believe I'm forgetting it. It doesn't matter. So, what is Bluetooth? Bluetooth is a way of sending data. It is a data transfer way. And you're probably then wondering, what is BLE? BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. It is a newer form of Bluetooth, but it is incompatible with the old Bluetooth. So people call new Bluetooth BLE and old Bluetooth Bluetooth Classic. And the main difference between Bluetooth and Bluetooth Classic is that BLE uses a different modulation system for its waves that makes it more efficient. So you can kind of think of Bluetooth low energy and Bluetooth classic like World of Warcraft where there is WoW and WoW classic. Good reference. Thank you. So now we need to know why is Bluetooth? Bluetooth was invented as an alternative to serial cables, specifically the RS232 serial cable, which was used to transfer data between devices. Now, you haven't seen this cable used in a modern world. The average person, I'll say the average person, has not seen this cable used in modern society in years. Usually, and allegedly, these cables are still used in data centers and by people who are network engineers, but I'm not a network engineer, so I've, it has been decades since I have seen one of these cables. Thank you. Which makes us ask, when is Bluetooth? When is Bluetooth? Bluetooth was invented by the telecom vendor Ericsson in 1994. So Bluetooth is over 30 years old. Then in 2006, Nokia created this other way of sending data called Wybri. Wybri was invented in 2006, but then in 2009 was adopted by the Bluetooth commissioners, the Bluetooth gang, um, as Bluetooth, the Bluetooth 4.0 spec which is why Bluetooth Classic is a different technology and, di and does not operate with Bluetooth low energy. Okay, are we aligned? So then where is Bluetooth? It's in the air. Bluetooth is in the air. Bluetooth operates in the radio waves between 2.4 and 2.485 gigahertz. Now, turns out the air and waves and uh, frequencies of waves in the air, because as, as a reminder, the air is full of waves, um, gets pretty crazy. And you're probably like, well, why? Why do we know, how do we know that Bluetooth is always going to operate in the, these, these, these uh, radio wave uh, lengths and frequencies? Like, how does that work? Oh my God. Well, it turns out that the air is highly governed. Fun fact. So in the U.S., for example, which is where this presentation is being made, um, in the U.S., all of the different frequencies of the air are allocated. And it turns out like you can get in trouble for operating in the wrong frequency of air, which is crazy. Because, where am I going with this? Oh my God. Uh, turns out you can operate in the wrong frequency of air. And looking at this just as like a piece of, of, of 
to help you conceptualize what is Bluetooth, because we're answering where, but what is Bluetooth here? Bluetooth technically is the same thing as X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared. It is, it is in the air. It is waves that travel in the air. If you were to free speed up the frequency of the wavelength of Bluetooth, it could become deadly because they are all electromagnetic radiations, AKA radio waves. And you're probably thinking, 2.4 gigahertz sounds really familiar because remember we said that Bluetooth operates in the 2.400 gigahertz range to the 2.4835 gigahertz range. You're probably thinking like, wow, that sounds really familiar. Yes, because 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, that is a thing. That is one of the radio frequency electromagnetic spectrums in which the internet operates. Which is why, yes, Bluetooth and your microwave can cause issues with your Wi-Fi. I don't know if anyone else has been in a space where someone will use the Wi-Fi, will use the microwave, and then all of a sudden the Wi-Fi just stops working in the area. That's because if we look at this graphic over here, the radio waves... Okay, this is too far for my... For my... No! If we look over here... This is where Wi-Fi is, and this is where microwave is, but they're kind of like close to each other. So your internet is somewhere in here. Your internet is somewhere in here, but so is your microwave. So that's fun. But I'm here to answer your, I'm here to answer your most important question. Can you eat Bluetooth? Yes. Open your mouth. You're eating Bluetooth. Yes. You, you, you can eat Bluetooth. Yes. You can consume it. If you open your mouth, you can consume Bluetooth. Yes. You can swallow it. And also if you speed up Bluetooth, you could make nuclear, you can make gamma rays, which will hurt you, but you can eat Bluetooth. So now, how is Bluetooth? Good, thank you for asking. But how does Bluetooth work? How does Bluetooth work? Bluetooth, let me, okay, I wanna make sure I have my notes for this, okay. Bluetooth works by sending packets of information through the air, through the wavelengths, because we know that Bluetooth is a series of wavelengths. So these wavelengths contains information, all of this information. And there's a lot of information here that is used by Bluetooth to help understand, oh my God, we have ads in 51 seconds. Oh no, um, subscribe if you don't want ads. <laughs> Sorry, Bluetooth is this is what Bluetooth waves consist of. And they send information, including preamble, access address, LL header, like all these different things. All of these different things are good and important for helping figure out where the Bluetooth wave is supposed to go, where the Bluetooth, like how you're supposed to unencrypt the Bluetooth wave, how you're supposed to process the Bluetooth wave. But what's important here is the data. And this is where the information and data about the um, thing that's being sent is actually written. It's written in here. So when you're sending music through the air, through Bluetooth, that information is written in here. Okay. So then how does Bluetooth secure? Bluetooth has three, potentially four instructions on clear modes of security which we will walk through them. So the first mode of security is that there's no security. That means that you can just send and receive waves. Mode two is service level security, which is used after an established connection. And there are four levels 
two mode two, no security, service level authentication, service level encryption, and then authentication and encryption. Technically, this like mode two level four authentication and encryption is the most secure version. Then there is mode three, which is link level security, which happens before establishing the connection. And that includes data signing. And there are two levels to that security, authentication and then authentication and encryption. Now there is this like special surprise, like fourth mode in which it's unclear how these modes are affected because these modes are specifically for Bluetooth classic, but then for Bluetooth low energy, the modes have changed such that there is a special fourth mode, which has the same levels as like secure sec um, authentication. Um, let, let me make sure I'm getting this right. So the fourth mode is, um, the fourth mode is um, has level one, no security, level two, unauthenticated with encryption, level three is authenticated with um, encryption, and level four is authenticated and encryption with a 128-bit like encryption cipher moment. But um, they really haven't done a good job explaining that in, in my short amount of research, so I really tried my best to explain it. Um, but that is my understanding of Bluetooth. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will not answer any questions. How do we do? Oh wait, I can just put chat here. What does Bluetooth taste like? Nothing. Feels amazing, man. Radiation. What is your what flavor is your Bluetooth? Mine is grape. I eat it with a bit of Wi-Fi on the side. What is the plural of Bluetooth? Um, blue teeth. The plural of Bluetooth is blue teeth. Do you feel like you're walking away with a strong understanding of how Bluetooth works? Do you, someone gave me, why am I getting so many wines? I got a four. Amazing. I'm thinking next week, edge computing. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me do this again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I want to know that you're enjoying this content. So let me know. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie, but I actually literally need to go to a doctor's appointment. If you have any other topics, let me know in the comments if you want to see me cover things.